Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and IP Labs. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by Mitch Goldstone, the CEO of at scanmyphotos.com. Mitch is a longtime industry member, and we go way back, don't we, Mitch? We do, Gary. Great to be with you. Uh, um, Not to age myself, but at least three decades. (laughs) Yeah, we go back to the mini lab days. Let's talk a little bit about that. You started out as a one-hour lab, like many people in the industry had. Uh, What was your background that made you decide to get into that business? Sure. It, my background is I'm a graduate from University of Southern California's um, Marshall School of Business Entrepreneur Program. And I, I love photography. My passion is, is pictures. And it, it all started actually when I was six years old. I was, um, I was at Disneyland with my, my dad. There was a picture of both of us, uh, him hugging me. And it was the last picture and my only memory of him, he passed away a year later. And oh, that's so I, sad. I, it, it, it is. I have that picture with me and it's in my mind. And everyone has a story like that of the most important, precious picture they have. So I, I've always loved photography. I went to Andover, Massachusetts, and uh, uh, actually took a course in rhetoric, uh, English, and photography. And it's funny, those two still uh, stay with me. So then, what, what what was the time frame on this this time period? Not to date yourself, but I think it's important from a technology standpoint for people to be aware of what was happening in photography at that time. Sure, it was Gary. You know, it was it was booming. It was 1990. My business mm-hmm. partner Carl Berman and I uh, found the Kodak Creative Print machine, the coolest innovation in the world. You stick mm-hmm. a negative into this huge, huge now boat anchor. And you see the image on a video monitor, you can zoom in, crop, make enlargements. And uh, through that, we met uh, um, with Naritsu, Jeff Rossi, and the whole group and started mm-hmm. going to the PMA, Photo Marketing Association conferences, realized we had to buy lots of equipment. And the beginning is actually where we are 32 years later. We're still taking ideas and making it 10 times better. You talked about one hour photo lab. First thing we did is we called it 30 minute photos, et cetera, because it was actually only 27 minutes to um, develop and print photos. Right. So th- that that really brings back memories, the old Kodak creative print, because it's <laughs> technology has changed so much. I don't think anyone really understands what a groundbreaking piece of equipment that was in terms of it let people, because at the time, as I recall, less than 3% of images were enlarged because it was very difficult to do because you would have to send in the negative to a lab and they'd send it off somewhere and they may or may not, you know, follow the cropping instructions and the color may or may not be very good, but you always got to print back. And that was really the first time that the consumer had control over what the final image was going to look like on a screen themselves. It was uh, pretty amazing. Like you said, it was 1990. It was before a lot of the digital stuff even happened. Indeed. And over the years, Kodak um, and and Fuji started developing uh, Mm -hmm. other um, innovations like APS, the Advanced Photo System. Uh, so they kept on having you buy new stuff to do new things. And then as digital uh, took over for film, the whole concept was doing online. So we did that. But as film transitioned to digital, Carl and I were were facing obsolescence. Um, right. And we realized there are trillions of pictures that, that were printed, but they're not digitized. So right. there was this huge market, uh, and then we started with with bulk, super high speed uh, professional photo scanners. And what was the time we, frame on this? So you'd been in the one hour lab for how many years before you started seeing, uh, you know, putting on your uh, your uh, wizard's hat and looking in the in the in the fortune teller's glass, looking and saying, you know, this isn't going to last forever. We need to make a change. So what what was that time frame? Well. 
I'm really good at scanning pictures, not that good at math. So it was 1990. And then uh, 2008 is when okay. we started. Uh, and we said, you know, we want to you know, scan my photos. And because right. no one was doing it, we were the first ones that pioneered all of this technology and service online right. that scanmyphotos.com domain was available. And you can't mm -hmm. get better for SEO than that. So I had reached out to David Pogue. He's mm -hmm. um, a well known author uh, mm -hmm. on all tech over the writer, place, CBS Sunday morning, every, yeah. everything. There's no one, uh, there's, there's Walt Mossberg and David Pogue. And right. David's a correspondent at CBS Sunday Morning. And I had reached out to him on a Sunday morning. And I said, hey, David, I could scan a 1,000 photos in five minutes. And he wrote back right away. He said, I don't believe it. And I said, yeah, we can. So he sent in photos, showed the whole thing. And it turned in on uh, August 14, 2008. Mm -hmm. His feature New York Times story was on Scan My Photos. And that, that put us on the map. And as you know, over the years, just hundreds of media from all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of 2008 that mm -hmm. that started. And then we uh, reinvented and created new digitizing products after that. Mm -hmm. But then at some point you said the retail thing isn't, isn't where we're at. So you close your physical store, but you still have a facility there in California, correct? We, we do. Right, uh, right nearby, it's in a large uh, uh, corporate complex and we have the building uh, people go to the website you could see the mm -hmm. scan my photos uh, campus all of that so it's it's much larger and everything changed we mm -hmm. have i think about 10 percent of our business actually comes from california it's all over the country um, um for that and you do some i mean obviously canada uh, and other countries i'm sure send to you as well i do and i was looking to uh expand internationally but it's it's just I want to control everything, and people wanted us to franchise and buy the company, everything, and I I need to control everything because it's all about word of mouth. You can't have one error, and so everything is processed done out of Irvine, California. So you're the self-proclaimed godfather of the scanning industry. Um, and a lot of, there's a lot of people out there who are also doing that, right? And they're, they're also doing video and some other things. Um, so how have you kept the business fresh over the years? Because some would say, it, because you're dealing with, you know, just pictures and there's trillions of them and everyone, you just have to create a workflow and create the business. How do you keep it fresh? I keep it. Well, first of all, I, I love competition, uh, except for one company. Everyone probably knows who they are. Um, I love uh, and, and that's because of their business practices. But I love competition because for any industry, it raises the tide of awareness for a product mm -hmm. and it gets more people engaged. And uh, the more that enter, the better. But to keep it fresh, you've got to constantly be innovating. Uh, if if your website hasn't been updated, you're mm -hmm. you're out of business. We just launched a whole new scanmyphotos.com website, mm -hmm. and to 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 share with you to keep it fresh, a lot of it. I'd, I'd love to take credit. I know Carl would too, but it's all from our customers. It's listening to customers saying, mm -hmm. "Hey, can you do this?" And people were wondering if we could do with slides, as mm -hmm. we do with photos, with bulk, high volume, and. Uh, we're getting so many customers who had slide carousels and mm -hmm. they wanted those digitized. So we launched a brand new product just now for $40, your entire slide carousel, up to 140 slides, digitized, uh, 4,000 DPI resolution. It's, it's like going to a restaurant, though, where you can just have the entree, you could look at uh, appetizers and mm -hmm. drinks, all the other stuff. So we have a whole menu of add-on services, including uh, what I think is pissing off everyone else in the industry, which is uh, uh, express scan fast, same day scanning. Okay. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that, because one of the challenges you have, I mean, it's a very competitive space in terms of the way consumers can get this done. They can, you know, obviously they can buy the Epson fast photo and try and do it themselves. Um, then go to their local photo retailer who probably has a scanning operation. They probably have a few of the Kodak scanners 
there, which have sadly been discontinued, but they're, you know, they're the workhorses, they're still out there. Or they can use innumerable number of send away services that are out there like yourself. So you're competing against all of those channels. And so now you're trying to up the ante in terms of service time. And in, in, indeed, you know, you could buy um, a scanner, do it yourself, just like mm-hmm. you could cook at home, but you want to go out to a restaurant that someone else, a professional, mm-hmm. serve you your right. meal. But if, if Gary, if you buy a scanner, do it home, you're out hundreds of dollars before mm-hmm. you digitize your first image. It's kind mm-hmm. of like Amazon Prime Day where, yeah, you save all this money, but you have to pay $139 up front before you save a penny. So nice. yeah, you could do it yourself, but it's 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 so much easier. We mm-hmm. handle everything with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's upping the ante with um, uh, Express ScanFast, where uh, just click the button and all your stuff is digitized, uploaded to you same day. So so, yeah, so walk me through that. the process. So somebody goes to your website, they order a box, you send them a box, right, and. Or they can just send you, or I imagine they can go to uh, you know, the store and just get one of those FedEx boxes, right? Or does that have to be your box? It's 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 either way. It's um, okay. you could send so, in your yeah, send in your photos individually, following our instructions how to prepare them, but slide and then, them. And then they arrive in your place, and then within a day, you're gonna have them scanned and uploaded within a day. Yep. So <laughs> I'm laughing, from, from, Gary, from a technical <laughs> standpoint, from a technical standpoint, uh, and I don't want to get into your secret sauce, but those are high res images, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah, for photo scanning, you could choose 600 DPI for slide scanning, 4000 DPI, same for negatives. Um, I'm, I'm kind of laughing because um, I hear from customers basically the same thing. Like, what is this all about? How can you do this? I just had an experience, and and this is becoming more common. Uh, there's this one company; it's taken five months, six months. Where is? Why is it all over social media? And I thought, what the heck? Why is it taking so long? It's just like on the uh, um, photo labs, right? Thirty minute photos. If if you can develop and print pictures in twenty seven minutes, why not do it in thirty? And the same with with this. Mm-hmm. So it's all about workflow. And Carl and I would love to take credit, but it's all our employees. They're, they are our secret sauce. Right. Yeah. How many? So just give people an idea of the scale of the operation. Uh, how, how many employees do you have? Well, you know, I, I try to keep that stuff because it's okay. so competitive. But what right. I do say is this year we preserved our one billion picture. Um, okay. which is an enormous amount. Uh, mm-hmm. It sounds like a lot, but you know, considering there, I think the number was like three and a half trillion, whatever it is, there, mm-hmm. there's so many. So, you know, yeah. when I started, it was super small. I remember we got our first box and then second, and then, you know, how do we get our third? And mm-hmm. now to have preserved mm-hmm. a billion pictures is, is, uh, is, is really it's kind of emotional because you think of all of those memories that have been right. preserved for forever. So, so how do you determine uh, like the pricing model? Because, you know, there's certain people who go premium for high res and things like that. And they've got tiers for various resolutions and, you know, various different models, but it seems to me like you've kind of tried to hit that kind of affordability sweet spot, but not so cheap that it's, uh, as we were talking before the podcast, crazy Eddie territory. <laughs> well, and they're different categories. See, my, my whole thought is if, if you could do it super fast and crazy and expensively, do it that way. So mm-hmm. um, you can, and, and you see on the website, uh, we have uh, flash sales up at the top for mm-hmm. discounts for, but if, if you could do it so fast and uh, economically, uh, pass on those savings to customers because today it's all about social media uh, reviews, feedback. And if someone has an extraordinary experience, mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, that's that's where uh, they are our marketing, they're our advertising. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's funny because you and I exchange emails probably a couple of times a year and you're always saying, what what's the latest marketing technique? What is the latest, uh, you know, program or site that people are using? And it's really it's really not even anything trendy anymore. I mean, you used to like you used to do a lot of group on a lot of people used to do a lot of group on and that kind of died away. I think it's just basically just being super consistent and getting those reviews and just it's more blocking and tackling than going for the hail mary touchdown pass i i I like that and indeed and yeah we were one of uh groupon's national account merchants and then it it was the best thing ever and then yeah that's all gone and so you gotta keep on coming up with with new things I, i think for us um my number one marketing is is scan my photos as a content provider for every photo sharing app from Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, uh, Google Photos, all of that. Whereas their users have us digitize all of their content and they upload. And that solved a huge problem for Facebook, Meta, whatever, all of them, because people were just uploading recent pictures from smartphones. And if you're kind of like me, they're pictures of you know what you ate last night, but mm-hmm. not those generations past mm-hmm. uh, nostalgic family photos those aren't being uploaded to any of these uh photo sharing apps right so um so how does that work i mean you said i mean you said you're a provider how does that help you if you're just an on-ramp if you're helping them with content how does that help you um in terms of I mean, do you have a partnership with them or how does that work? I'm just curious. No, no. And that's what's beautiful. I'm so glad. I love Twitter, but I'm so glad not uh, in in, uh, uh, strategic partnership with them, or at least right now, because we have our independence. So we're content providers in that all of their users uh, that have their pictures digitized then upload it. Them. So it's kind of like a triangle where you have the media, you have the customer, and then you have the photo sharing uh, app. And we're the catalyst that links the three okay. together. Well, that's interesting. So, um, so tell me a little bit about the impetus for the development of the ScanFast idea, because honestly, it's I wouldn't say it's kind of extreme, but it's not something you really had to do. I mean, were you getting were you getting demands from the customer that I need this same day, or was it just sort of like you anticipating this is where it was going to go? Gary, you know, I think everything with the photo business, and you know this for all these decades, is it's the most emotional, personalized business there there is. And uh, the Express Scan Fest came. Everything comes out of our customers, and mm-hmm. I almost. Uh, hearing, thinking about it, because during COVID, uh, all of the uh, incoming feedback, comments, calls, live support uh, Mm -hmm. were from people who needed everything digitized immediately for memorial services. So we just pushed them to the front of the list. And I realized that Mm -hmm. people needed all of this uh, preserved, whether it's for funerals, you know, happier times for weddings, everything else, celebrations, uh, fast. They, they didn't want to wait literally right. months. So right. that's where we, we came up with it. It came out of uh, the COVID mm-hmm. pandemic. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting how, and you hate to look at the bright side of a pandemic because that's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a disaster. Um, but it's almost like the same thing that happens when a hurricane hits Florida and people realize how valuable their pictures are. It's it's one of those things, like you said, from an emotional content standpoint, you know, that some of those pictures, like that picture of you and your dad, that means the world to you. Uh, and, you know, you've made multiple copies. I'm sure you've got a frame enlargement somewhere in your office, you know, just and that's something the industry, I think. Um, despite the technology changes, um, has really been able to focus on. It, it, it has. And if uh, anyone just, just go to the Scan My Photos website, because about halfway down, uh, there's a video from, uh, it was produced, one of this from the U.S. Postal Service. They did a commercial on us that they love the story that people trust the U.S. Postal Service with delivering their most 
Precious Possessions, cool commercial, but right above it is the Weather Channel story. There was a hurricane and they opened with this, this sweet uh, older lady in New Jersey mm-hmm. uh, during Hurricane Sandy. And the first scene is her uh, outside her house. There's mm-hmm. no house, Gary, there's nothing. Right. And right. all of the photos are all over. And, and that's where they came in and uh, introduced uh, Scan My Photos for right. protecting from wildfires, hurricanes. It, it's the stuff to plan ahead. If all of your slides, your photos, you know, tucked away in albums and closets, all right. uh, you got to plan ahead. And that's, I think that's what is the other reason why our people are doing this because of uh, preparing for natural disasters. Well, and also because there's a certain, you know, the the analog demographic, right? The 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 Gen X and the Boomers who were still using film, you know, they're aging out and they're passing those images on to their kids or their families, and in a lot of cases they don't want the the prints, but they want the images. So, from a demographic standpoint, I think there's a lot of drive there. It it is our demographics are uh, females forty five and above, but. What's interesting over the years is I'm seeing that coming down where the kids and grandkids now are doing this as projects for uh, the seniors. And there's uh, one of the best, Steven Spielberg, not to to, uh, brag about USC, but one of the greatest (laughs) things about the University of Southern California is Steven Spielberg established the Shoah Foundation. And Mm -hmm. he went out, preserved the memories of all the remaining Holocaust survivors, all of their archives, everything digitized, mm. and to tell those stories. So, you know, if you if you sum up our industry, it's all mm. about storytelling and sharing mm. and new mm. ways of doing things with with your old memories. Where can people go for more information about? I know you've name dropped the website a dozen times, but do you want people to connect with you on LinkedIn? Or go to the website. How do people? How do you want people to 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 talk with Mitch? Just, just to go just directly to the website. Everything is mm-hmm. uh, is there in one place. And uh, mm-hmm. what what I love for people to do because I, I don't want to hear how great it is, how modern, cool, the bells and whistles, the <laughs> the accessibility. Thing, I mean, all the the stuff we have. I want to hear the bad stuff. That's all. That's my job in life. I want to hear what's wrong. And uh, there's there's a story, uh, there's a joke, a uh, uh, waiter goes up to four uh, elderly women at the end of their meal and he says, ladies, was there anything all right? And, mm-hmm. and that's me. I, I don't want to hear what's all right, what you mm-hmm. loved, everything. I want to hear any issues, problems, what we can right. do better, uh, because that's, that's what it's all about, constantly mm-hmm. improving. And, um, but yeah, just go to the website and you, connect uh, with with me and uh, all that but I I always love feedback on what's wrong what's missing and mm-hmm. what can we do to make things even better well thanks Mitch for your time best wishes on your new uh, fast scan program and look forward to talking to you soon my pleasure and Gary you're the best you are uh, there's no one better than you so I'm just grateful for constantly reading of the Dead Pixel Society, your emails, everyone subscribe. (laughs) Well, thank you, Mitch. I appreciate that. Take care. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.